It goes without saying that we all want to shrink our design sizes, right? And along with that, we all want to reduce the EMI in our power supplies as well. Okay, so how do we go about doing that? Easy. Power modules. And lower overall material cost, PCB costs, and design costs. Yeah, power modules are pretty great. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Christine Chaco from Texas Instruments and I explore a variety of power module package technologies, examine the many ways that power modules can help save on total design solution cost, and the unique benefits that Texas Instruments power modules can bring to your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Texas Instruments. Hi, Christine. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about power modules today. But before we dig into the details, Christine, can you give us some background on power modules and what makes them different from a converter? Yeah, that's a great question. So a DC-DC module is basically a converter with extra passive components integrated inside. So from the outside, both the DC-DC module and converter, especially if they're the overmolded package type, will look pretty much the same. They have that same package exterior and the footprint view at the bottom. But when you look up the inside, you'll see that the module includes the DC-DC converter IC as well as an inductor and extra passive components. So a power module is basically a converter with your needed inductor and extra passives. Okay, so power modules are available in quite a few different package technologies, right? Yeah, so what I described in the last slide was the overmolded stilted QFN package seen in that second to last column. But there's a variety of package types that kind of fit into different niches of applications that you might see. The MicroSIP module package is our smallest package type. And the way that we're able to get ultra small with this one is that we integrate the converter IC into the PCB substrate in that green material you see in the image. And then we integrate an inductor on top of that substrate. So this is great for super space constrained applications. The next one is the open frame QFN package. This one's the most similar to what you would see in a discrete system. So if you were designing your own DC-DC regulator, it would look something like this, where we have the converter IC next to the inductor and passive components all on one PCB. This is great for higher current modules and also allows for additional airflow, which helps your system thermally. The next package type is the overmolded side-by-side QFM. This one's very similar to the open frame, except we're not integrating these components on a PCB substrate, but we're actually integrated them on a lead frame. And all these components on the lead frame are then overmolded, helping it protect itself against any issues in its environment. And this last package type that I wanted to focus on was the MagPack technology housed in a QFN package. This package uses our proprietary integrated magnetic packaging technology that helps us remove our dependence on third-party inductor vendors. And this kind of translate into total solution cost and solution size decreases for the customer. Fantastic. Now, what do you think are the biggest benefits that power modules bring to the table? Yeah, I think the biggest benefit would be the small solution size that modules bring. If you were to design a converter solution discreetly, you would have to think about spacing your components enough on the boards, you're not crossing any design rules. But when you use a module, all those components are included into that one package. So you don't have to worry about making sure that your inductor is spaced a little further from your capacitor and the layout is much easier. And overall, the space that a module would take up is much less than what you would see in a discrete solution. The next biggest benefit of using a power module is the reduction in design time and complexity. Power modules are inherently easy to use because 
of their integrated inductor and extra passive components. You no longer have to worry about sourcing those materials and making sure that they're the most optimal components for your design. All that work is kind of done for you. So with the module, you're actually reducing some of the time it'll take to choose components as well as time it takes to figure out the layout on your board. The last huge benefit of using a module is the amount of EMI reduction you'll see. So because of the integrated passives, you actually have inherent EMI reduction because of decreased ringing in the high DIDT loop at the input, as well as a smaller switch node size. And in addition to integrated passive components decreasing EMI, you'll also see better EMI because of spread spectrum capabilities, as well as slew rate control. So... Power modules can also save on the overall cost of the design, right? Yeah. So when you think about total solution costs, there's three things that you need to consider. The first being material costs. This includes IC costs, inductor, resistor, and capacitor costs, and any other components that you will be placing on the board. You'll then have to focus on PCB costs, which include footprint area of your solution, via costs, and the cost actually pays all of those components I mentioned earlier. And the last thing you ought to think about is design costs. This includes R&D costs and the time sensitivity of the market. So how fast do you really want to get your system out in front of customers? When you use a module, the material costs are decreased for you because you get to take advantage of the high volume pricing that's granted to TI for their inductor and passive components that are included in the module. For PCB costs, you actually see this decrease as well because the module is smaller and there are less components to place on the board for your power stage. And lastly, design costs also decrease because much of the validation and characterization that you would have to do for each component is actually taken on by Texas Instruments when they're developing the module. So it's no longer something that designers have to worry about and gives them time to move on to other portions of their system and actually release their system to market much sooner. So I'm glad to see how much power modules can save on that overall system cost, but can you also elaborate on how they can decrease EMI? Yes. So when you design a switching regulator solution discreetly, you have to think about where you're placing your input capacitors and your inductor in relation to your converter IC. In many cases, because of the size of the IC and because of layout restrictions, you cannot place your input caps close enough to your high side FET and your inductor close enough to your switch node to really reduce any of the ringing in that high DIDT loop area, as well as the ringing from the switch node. When using a DC-DC power module, though, you're able to take advantage of the fact that the integrated input capacitor is placed as close to the high side FET as possible, as well as the inductor being placed as close to the switch node as possible, closer than you would get in a discrete solution, therefore reducing the areas of both the loop and the switch node, and then further decreasing EMI in your system. So... Christine, are there any other design challenges that you see power modules helping with? Yes. Yeah, so outside of the sourcing and choosing passive component challenges, much of what you'll face has to do with prototyping and validating your components, making sure you have the right and optimal components for your application. When using a power module, much of that is kind of pushed back to the TI designers. When they start developing a power module, they choose a converter IC that uses some of our latest DC-DC regulator technologies and also pair it with passive components and inductors that are going to allow for the best performance in the area that they're qualifying for. They also characterize these components and the full solution across a variety of use cases and checking every corner case to make sure that there's no improper functionality. And then lastly, we validate each component to make sure that the module is working as intended. So when it comes to you, you don't need to do much of the extra checks and validation. So 
Christine, what kind of power modules does TI offer that addresses all of those issues you mentioned? Yeah, so the TPSM 63610 was one that I wanted to highlight as a balanced and high-performance buck module. This one's a 36-volt, 8-amp module that offers a shielded inductor as well as spread spectrum and slew rate control for better EMI. It has an input capacitor and a boot capacitor, also helping decrease extra ringing in the device. It has a symmetrical pinout for better pin FMEA and has the functional safety capable classification, meaning that we've used a quality managed development process. We'll also provide a functional safety fit rate calculation and a failure mode distribution for this device. It's also configurable in an inverting buck boost topology, if that's something that's necessary for your application. Another device that I wanted to highlight was the TPSM 64406. This one's a 36 volt dual three amp or single six amp buck module. It also is one of our higher current modules, allowing you to stack it up to 18 amps. It also offers accurate current sharing with output clock and a power good pin to monitor those downstream modules whenever you do use it in a multi-phase system. The last two modules I wanted to highlight are the TPSM 33625 and the TPSM 365R15. The big point about these two modules is that they're actually housed in the same package type and have the same pinout meaning that when you design in something like the TPSM 33625 and you realize you need a wider input voltage range to handle higher transients, maybe up to 65 volts, you'd be able to transition to something like the TPSM 365R15 without much effort because the pinout is so similar and much of the external components will be similar as well. Not only do you take advantage of this like pin-to-pin compatibility, you also experience low IQ and no load, great efficiency across the full load range, and then, of course, excellent noise reduction with spread spectrum and the features of just using a power module. So what kind of applications do you think these solutions would be a good fit for? Yeah, uh, so power modules are honestly useful in even more applications than what you see here because of their small solution size, high integration, high power density, ease of use, the list goes on. But I wanted to highlight these sectors here just so you can understand how specific features can actually benefit you at the end of the day. In factor automation applications like field transmitters, sensors, and human-machine interfaces, modules offer low IQ for good power consumption and system longevity, as well as a small package for those space-constrained applications like sensors. In building automation, HVAC systems, and fire safety systems, Modules offer the wide input voltage range, like I mentioned, with that 65-volt module. And they also offer low-rated EMI for any applications that require wireless connectivity to prevent any extra noise. For medical imaging and patient monitoring applications, modules offer frequency sync to help avoid interference with the imaging equipment. And they also have ability to function in a buck boost topology as seen with the TPS 63610. All right. So Christine, if my audience is ready to get started, what kind of supporting materials does TI have to help them on their way? Yeah, TI offers a huge range of tools to help you get started and to keep you going during your module design process. We have documents from AppNotes, which will go into detail about specific use cases and applications, as well as quick start tools, which allow you to input your design requirements and see a starting schematic of which components you should include externally and how they might behave. We also have WebEnch, which is a great automated system similar to the quick start calculator. It helps you see how you can optimize your system for efficiency, solution size, and price. And then lastly, we have simulation models and evaluation boards that allow you to have a more hands-on approach to working with our modules and designing them into your systems. 
Excellent. Well, Christine, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Texas Instruments. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal.